go live and start recording. Hello and welcome to a moment of clarity. A little bit early to the party today because I wanted to make sure that the volume is working after this morning's little adventure. Uh, I think it is. Uh, I'm pretty certain it is. So a little bit early but that's okay. Just checking that everything is working. You can see here we're at the show and that's what the moment of clarity is all about, isn't it? It's where, uh, because of the lockdown, and because of our safe social distancing, we haven't been able to get to the NEC or Ali Pali or Doncaster or Scotland, the SECC, all those wonderful exhibitions that we always go to where we demonstrate our wares and, and you come piling in. I mean, it's for many of you, it's the highlight of the year. And so a couple of months ago we decided, since we can't really gather in big groups, we thought we'd have um, moments of clarity and we would bring the party to you virtually. So you can see here, we've got, I've laid it all out for you, loads of lovely colourful things and the beautiful butterfly stamps that we're going to be working with today. Uh, we've got the range of stuffs back on the racks, happy days. So in fact we've even got... Um, a discount code, a Ranger 10 it is. So if you do decide to go to the website, because this is definitely, this is uh, where you can take advantage. Uh, if you do decide to uh, go shopping this weekend, it's till Monday, if I'm not mistaken. And so you can use um, that discount code Ranger 10 on any Ranger products and it will automatically discount any Ranger products in your basket. So I think we're ready to rock and roll. Sound is good, says Paul. Paul is in the building with you and he will be helping you and guiding you and answering your questions. And I'm going to slow it down in a minute when it gets to three o'clock, which it is, and we are ready to go. Because one of the other things with the moment of clarity, what kind of evolved from this was, we realised very quickly that you like to craft along. So many of you have already bought these butterflies, many of you have already got the designer parchment, we've been peddling to get it out to you in time and, uh, and so now it's just a question of putting these beautiful stamps through their paces and we're going to craft along together. So I'll slow it right down and then we'll get started. Welcome to a moment of clarity. Uh, what's today? Friday. Beautiful sunny day today. <laughs> Uh, where we are here in, in East Sussex. And what about where you are? Is it lovely? The garden is just buzzing at the moment with, with, with wasps and insects and butterflies. I even saw a couple of butterflies. They must have been asleep. Right, so shall we, um, shall we get started? We've already got 150 visitors. Welcome. Sorry about my arm. My, I've been overdoing it a little bit and I think it's a combat. Funny enough, I'm left-handed. Happy days. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit sore. So I just thought it, it doesn't help much, but it reminds me when I've got this on, it reminds me to, to not press so hard with this hand because clearly I've been compensating with this one and now this one's done. What do you do? I know. Um, so I started, the, my friends in Texas, they said that uh, mar marijuana cream is great. So it tastes all right. Get used to it. <laughs> no, you don't. You do not ingest it. You're supposed to rub it on. I'm only joking. Don't you start drinking it and eating it. Don't blame me. It works actually. It does work, I must say. Yeah. I'll try anything before I try surgery. Right, are we ready to rock and roll? Let's have a look at what we're going to do today. Well, the first thing we want to do is take a look at these beautiful butterflies. So, should we just indulge these lovely butterflies? These are um, illustrations by, by the very clever Cherry Green. So let's have a look at the butterflies and then we'll get our bits and pieces together and we'll get started. So you can see here we've got two sets of very, very beautiful images all uh, hand drawn by, by Cherry Green. And then what we've also got included in each pack 
of course, many of you have already got this, we've got the coloured illustrations by Cherry herself as well. So they're in there. And then the other thing, of course, that we've included is the masks. So that's also included in each pack. A very good price on these. Very good price indeed. Um, introductory price, let's say. And um, and so we're gonna we're gonna use these, and we're gonna put them. We're gonna use them in conjunction with some designer, with some uh, designer parchment. So the thing about this is that we we. We always associate parchment with parchers and we don't think that stampers use parchment, it's like a separate entity. But to me it's just a really deluxe, beautiful uh, paper that has really special properties. And that's really what I wanted to go through with you today was, was that. So while, let's have a look first of all at the images up front on the stamps. And then while we're doing that, we can, we can look at, um, we can look at the parchment as well. So you can see these beautiful images here. This is, uh, they're, they're pretty spectacular. This is set one and you can see they've got butterflies and moths and then we've got set two as well. So really, really lovely. Um, and this is actual size. So they've got some really lovely big bold butterflies and then you've got some smaller butterflies side on, very pretty. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. And, uh, and then the next thing, let's have a look at a couple of samples first. So you see them in, in, in situ. And then when we've done that, we can, um, once we've had a look at a couple of samples, then we can start stamping up ourselves. So first of all, let's look at this one. So this is a beautiful piece of artwork by Dee. And you'll see that she stamped onto card. She pico cut it out. This is parchment in the background. So again, but it's parchment, it's our designer parchment. This is a Shenandoah piece, if I'm not mistaken. And you can see it has a translucency to it. So you, it's see-through if you're new to it. And, uh, and then you can see this has just been stamped on card, masked. So the one at the front, stamped, covered up, stamped and stamped. So very, very pretty, very nice indeed. Now let's have a look at this one. This is interesting. Let's take a look at this one. I like this. I was intrigued. Again, this is parchment in the background and you, you'll see when we look at the parchment more closely, it's got two sides. It's got a back and a front. And what Dee again has done here, she's used the back at the front so it's more bright and it's got a kind of a shimmer to it. Let's have a look on this camera and see if we can see the it's very, yeah, it's, it's, it's brighter. It's very bright on the back. But what's interesting with this one, you see here she's stamped onto the parchment as well, and then she's cut them out and she's laid them up. But where did she find this background? Intrigued. Well, we'll have a look at that in a minute. So let's park that one to one side and let's look at the next one. So this one here, this is beautiful. You might remember this from the shack when we were um, Let the Sunshine, it's one of our shack projects, isn't it? And what Dee's done here, really beautifully, I might add, is she's, look, you see how, because parchment, you think it's very delicate, but it, actually it's quite robust, you know, and you can see here, she's stamped onto the card, and then she's layered up those beautiful translucent wings. You see, and you can bend it up. Look, it's really lovely. What a lovely three-dimensional piece of artwork that is, isn't it? Yeah, really nice. So, isn't that beautiful? So you see how you can just add so much interest to a card in that re in, 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 with, with parchment. Now, let's have a look at this one. And this is lovely. So this is, we're getting closer to what we're, we're going to do today too. I'm just getting everybody in the building. Everybody, just so that we can settle down and uh, get started. And you can see here again, stamped on parchment, but then masked. And the way that D has created this dark, this shadow behind, is simply to mask off. So she's masked off the front. Where's this one from? Oh yeah, there's this one. So she's masked off, stamped it, masked it, 
brushed black over the back. Uh, and you know that it's, you see the, the parchment takes black archival ink beautifully. So, so that's how that one's been done. And then this one, this is lovely. So you can see here again, it's on parchment, stamped, layered up, but you can't, you can't feel it. I wish we had feely telly, but if you could feel this, this is start now we're starting to use embossing. So all the whiteness in here is, you can see that beautiful, really strong whiteness. That's actually done using embossing tools and stretching through the colour. So, so that's really where I wanted to go with you today. Look at all these different possibilities. So we've got all these lovely parchment samples that Dee so kindly um, did for me. She's a talent, isn't she? Absolutely amazing woman. Good friend too. And this one, this is the one that intrigued me. So I thought, well, I, I recognise it, but where's it from? And then I realised, okay, when you go to the parchment pack, look what's on the back. Look. So what she's done is she's taken the parchment pack and you know what? She's so right. I've thrown all the backs away. I never bothered because I put them in their folders and then I, I wanted the front, but I didn't think to keep the back. But what a smashing, what a smashing card backdrop that is. And then I started looking at all the others. So then I looked at the designer card, the toppers, and of course, same again on there. Yeah, but smaller. So all you got to do. So then I looked at this and I thought, aha, uh -huh, mileage in, in the in the inserts. So you cut this bit out, either of the parchment back in paint that that flap or this one. Look, you could even grab this as well if you're not using it. Why waste it, you know? Because in the end, really, what we usually just go to is this, isn't it? That's all we we usually look at. So that was a, that was a, a heart moment for me, I have to say. So I'll just pop that in there for a minute. And what I wanted to, just to, before we get started, let me just put these out of the way and then we'll have a look at the, these different parchments. Cause this is, this is card, you know, the little toppers, which is great as well. Um, wait till next week before you buy any of that. Wait till next week before you, I'll say that slowly. Wait till next week before you buy any of the design toppers, right? Now, the parchment though, you can see here, we've got different, we've got ranges. If I show you one range, Indian summer, if you're new to Clarity, then you'll be, you'll be thinking, well, how many different sorts have we got? So we've got all the different ranges, Indian summer, Shenandoah, etc., etc. We've got all these. We started out with Indian summer and Northern Lights. You liked them so much. I designed Shenandoah and Rainbow River. Interestingly, I did, I designed the originals with alcohol ink, Ranger 10, right? Discount code, alcohol ink and Upo paper, also from Ranger, Ranger 10, right? So I used actually these inks and these little pads here right, and, uh, and Upo paper to create the originals. Thing is, it's quite expensive to create an original like that, and that's why I made these, these pads. And we started out the original, because Upo paper is five by seven, five by seven. So this is actual size art here in the designer, but don't get them till next week. Really, I have a really good reason to tell you that. But if you look at then, what we did was, let's have a look. So we've got the designer, um, the designer card, five by seven. Then we've got the eight by eight paper. So you've got 12, right, this is in everyone. This is just happens to be Indian summer. So we've got eight by eight paper, and then you've got 12 different designs, double-sided, you see? So you've got double-sided, so it looks like that on one side and that on the other side. So you've got 12 different designs and you've got four of each. So that's pretty cool. And then we said, right, okay, let's invest. And so we did it in parchment. We did it in parchment. And it's actually a formidable price. And to celebrate the moment of clarity, it's a, an even more formidable price. Um, because we had to order an inordinate amount of it to get a great price. 
So we've got a lot of it. <laughs> so buy it. <laughs> but it's really beautiful. And, and, you know, it lasts forever. You don't, it's not going, going to go off, is it? So, but, so we've got the parchment as well, right? So we've got the designer card, we've got the paper, we've got the parchment. And then we brought in the mother, the 12 by 12, the big, same again, right? But this is more intended, funny enough, for me, this is more for the fresh cut dies, for the inserts, for the cards, for the paper cuts. So, so that is the entire range, okay? And that's what's available. And today we're going to the parchment because that to me makes sense. So I want to show you, let's have a look at this piece of artwork. This is beautiful because this really puts it through its paces. So I wanted to do two things with you today, you know, just different skill sets. And we've got this one here. And what we've got is we've deliberately left it. So we've just, so that we can look at the back as well and we can see what the difference is between the front and the back. So I want to work with you on this one today. So you're going to need, this is, you're going to need a piece of parchment. This happens to come from Waimea Falls designer parchment. I love this. This is uh, deluxe. And when we go in here, you can see, let's have a look. The Waimea Falls is pretty special. There it is. That's the one that one there. Okay. So if you look, let me just open this up, humor me here. If you look, you can see these are the same, the same parchment on once. This one is the back and it's quite shiny. Do you see? And this one is quite dull because that's the front. So that's the back is brighter and the front is duller. The reason for this is when we had these printed, we all our colored parchment is like this. It's only saturated with color on one side and the reason for that is so that you can get this fantastic white work you, it still prevails because there's no ink on the front okay so let's take this one we're going to use that one that's lovely when you when you get parchment you'll it's i mean it's precious it's precious i actually keep mine always in my folder let me come out a little bit. I'm a bit closer than I need to be at the moment. Right, let's have a look. So when you look in my folder, you'll see what I mean. I cut this bit off. Right. And then what I've got is I've got my, my parchment in my folder. See? So you, And I've just put a piece of white paper behind it. Because it's translucent, you can't often, you, often you can't even see what it looks like. So this is the one I'm going to use out of Indian Summer, this one. That's the one we're going to use. Going to run on two different tracks here because we're going to let it dry and jump about a little bit, put a few things through their paces. I think we've got, we're together for at least an hour, so we'll have plenty of time to do that. Right, so have you got, or at least have you got one piece of, I'm, I'm going to go with two. Right, we're going to use that one and then we're going to, let me just get a bit of card or paper. There you go. And then we'll use this one as well. So Indian Summer and why may I fall? Let's start with this one. So what you want to do first, before we do anything else, let's locate this particular butterfly. You could do a, a sequence of any three butterflies, but if you want to do a Simon Says, i.e. work with me, then this is what, I've just stamped them up on, um, on mount board so you can see which one's which, there you go. So I'm going to use that one there, that one there, that one there, and that one there, those three. And those three all come from the same set. So it's this one. No, they don't. <laughs> Daft. That one, that one, and the big ones from the other set. Yes, of course it is. Great. So get your butterflies ready. I've got, I've got that one. I've got that one, and then I need that one. Have you got all three of them? So I've got to dither a bit, otherwise you won't, you won't keep up. <laughs> That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. So we're gonna hang on to these, right? Because they make that beautiful, um, you know that triptych that we were talking about with the three apertures. And I just, I was playing with some color. I thought that'd be interesting. 
So these are such glorious stamps. So the first thing we're going to do is stamp the one in the middle and then we need to park it because it needs to dry. Okay, so let's just put this stuff to one side. Right, bit of copy paper underneath, like so, so you can see what I'm doing. That'll do. And then we're going to just, oh, oh, jam side up. A bit of luck. It's filthy in here. <laughs> right, one in the middle first. Let's do that. Oh, my. Now, sort your wrist out, Grey. So we're going to put one in the middle first. Right, first of all, let's prime our stamps. Don't stamp it yet, though. I've got an idea. Just add a little bit of ink. Look, this is a trick. Top tip, top tip. Right, just smear a bit of ink on there, but don't stamp it. Just put it to one side. This is called seasoning your ink pad. Now, take a bit of talc. Have you got... Ah, oh, there's... The, now they're all like... Well, you didn't put that on your list, did you? Grey. Look, now I've got to... Sh <laughs> I can hear Helen Whitehead. Darling, come on! Quickly, I need some talc. You can use an anti-static pad as well. Right, all right. It helps. It really does. Okay. At the moment, there are about 237 people all scrambling into the bathroom to go and get some talc. I'll wait for you. It's okay. It's no hardship. Okay. <laughs> right. And which side are we using? We're stamping on the front, the dull side. And what we're going to do is just put a little bit of talc or anti-static, whatever, or French chalk, right? Just, let's take our time doing this as well. Can we, please? It's not a rush, is it? Are you going anywhere? I'm not. Dave just got back from Scotland. You should see the size of this thing in the back of the van. It is a monster. It's a absolutely fantastic, a printing press. Beautiful. I tell you one thing, it ain't going in the garage. <laughs> no chance. It's about two foot taller than the garage. So plan B. <laughs> right, you've got your towel. Come on, dust your towel. We're stamping, I'll say it again slowly, we're stamping on the front, on the dull side of the parchment. And we're going to just coat it with a little bit of towel. And now we're going to ink up for, for real, okay? We're going to ink up for real. So ink up your stamp. Ink up your stamp well. Right. Oh, my blooming wrist. Right, I'm going to come down here for a minute so I can, so I can see how my wrist is, how my thumb's gone. Decide where you want to put it because this is a fast drying ink pad, the old black archival. Range of 10. Yeah. This is the time to stock up. If you're a club member. Right, here we go. Okay, ink, bush, bosh, stamp, right, and then press, and then we'll go to that camera, and then we'll press, just get a nice impression on there. Don't worry if it's not solid black, but you do need a wet ink pad. One thing I've noticed is you do need a wet ink pad. I've got another idea, like, let's turn it over, and you can see, let's have a look here, you can see the translucency. If you just press a little bit on there, it sticks because you just do that, right? And just gently burnish it with your finger, not for too long. Then peel it off, wunderbar, right? So you've got numero uno. Right, so that's the first one. Put that back. And what we've got to do now is let that dry because if you try and put the mask on there now, really it's better if you let it dry, okay? So, did yours come out? No? Sorry. Right, if it came out almost, and there's just a couple of little bits missing, right, then get your, because you're bound to have these, get a thin one of these, micron pen, and just add a, black it up, or add a little line, whatever's missing, use this. When it dries, it's also waterproof. Okay, it's a micron pen, which we happen to have in the shop. Where did I put them? There they are. Told ya. Okay. Voila. This is me trying to help you catch up. Right, so this is the way to, to touch up your artwork should you have missed a little bit.
Now, let me show you another little trick. If it was completely a shambles, right? <laughs> Come on, let's be honest. Sometimes it helps if you prime the stamp. These are big stamps. It helps if you prime the stamp. It helps if you've got a wet ink pad. These are all, you know, if you just keep doing it again and again. Let me show you a trick though. I've got a tester just to show you. If I, I've stamped on here. Let's, this is my tester to show you. This goes over to the side because we're going to, we're going to come back to that. Right, now let me take a bit of copy paper. You ready? If you, you think, well that didn't go so well, here's the good news. Right, Ranger, <laughs> alcohol blending solution, loo roll or tissue, watch. Let's pretend that we don't, this is all a, a hodgepodge. This is me testing when I test things, right? If I, oh, I can't open it with that one. And I'd do it with my teeth, but my mother would have a fit. Right, so let me show you this. And you got, you can get in really tight. If I want to completely get rid of the whole butterfly, right, then I can just, oh, just squeeze a bit of this on there. And then say I want to get rid of this bit. Look, watch. So I was thinking yesterday, look, see how it just removes it with the blending solution. All right, discount code, <laughs> Ranger 10. See how you can get rid. So I was thinking if you wanted to do something really like uh, ethereal, you know, and you wanted, you didn't want to mask it off so it was like radically behind there, but you wanted to sort of cloud it a bit so that it disappears rather than it kind of into the mist or into a cloud, right? Then you could, first of all, here's a, then you just go lightly like that. Yeah, see? And then when you, when you do it like that, let me come in a bit tighter so you can see it. You see how you can just, it cleans it away without, oh. and then you could stamp the next one in front of it, let it dry. It dries very fast, this. Okay, now the other thing I wanted to say was, pretend, you want to get in and do some, oh, I can't get it off. Say you want to, uh, let's take a, just un momento, por favor. Right, you want to get one of these, right? Blending pens. And let's take a nib. Let's take a nib. I have a few. <laughs> Look, one of the perks of owning the company. Oh, let me just get a nib. That'll do. Nice, clean one. Okay. I'll tell you what. You don't realise how important your thumbs are until until they don't work very well. <laughs> you don't, do you? It's not something that you ever think about, really. I bet your toes are important as well. Right, have a look. So if I just take a, t something to just add a little bit of this to, and then I'm going to soak up some of this with one of these blending nibs. Now, I bet, I haven't even tried this yet, but I can't see why this wouldn't work. Say I wanted to, just why would you, but say you want to, you got a problem in one area, right? You can go in, yeah, I knew you would. Look, see, you can go in and you can completely, you can get so much detail. Isn't that clever? Look. Right, look. And if you, yeah, hello, look at that. So you can take out, it's good, isn't it? Yeah, so there you go. So I've given you a couple of little tips there on how to, how to correct your work using blending solution, um, how to stamp well, right? This needs to dry before we continue. So let that dry, leave that there, and let's get the other the other colour out. That's all right. We've got loads of different, this, it will come together fast when it does. Now, again, we're going to use the front. Let's use the front. And I want this time, I want to show you, let's do this one. See, it's a little bit different. We're going to use a different butterfly. See, this one's got a bit of an angle on it. So, but if you think about it, this is a reflection of that one. So I want to show you how to do, um, how to get reflections. Do you remember when we did, um, the last time we were here, we did reflections, didn't we? I'm all into reflections. Do you remember when we did this with these masks? Look, 
Do you remember the reflection masks? And the way they work, let me see if I can find them. I'm sure I put them on the back shelf. Here they are. See? Do you remember the reflection masks? Huh? And you needed a top and a bottom. So you had a, a upstairs, downstairs, upstairs, downstairs, upstairs, downstairs, didn't we? So these are the reflection masks and that's how you create this. Okay, so I want to show you now how to create a reflection using parchment. Oh, hang on, don't throw that, uh, put that away. So I'm going to show you how to use parchment to, it's the translucency of it. That's the key. Remember when we turned that one over and you could see right through to the stamp? There's the answer. But there are a couple of little tricks and tips I want to give you along the way. So first of all, let's season that big stamp. Look for that beautiful one. We're looking for, for this one now, that one. That's in this set here, if that helps. <laughs> now, where did I put that one? Where did I put that great big stamp then? Bear with me a second while I find the most important stamp in the cupboard. Now, that's weird. Where did I put that then? I must have had it because I couldn't have stamped without it, friends. No, it's not there. It's not. Oh, here it is. I, I mounted it on a flat mount. That's why I couldn't see it. Yeah, I mounted it on a flat mount so I could show you while I was stamping it. It's a large stamp. So get a bit of copy paper first. Let's pan out a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, out. Rouse, rouse, rouse. Right, that's it. Right, so the first thing we'll do is we'll stamp this onto a bit of copy paper and we'll prime it that way this time. Okay? So, again, N is for new. <laughs> yeah? Right. Priming. It doesn't matter if this one's not a perfect image. <sighs> That'll do. Right. So we'll stamp that in place and then we'll apply a bit of pressure to the center around the outside. Not with that thumb grey. God dear. It's a good job it's a weekend. Right, that'll do. Wunderbar. So I've got that done and I've primed my stamp at the same time. Right, now, same sketch. Talc. Did you manage to get some talc? Yeah? Right, which end do I want to go? You're going at the front. I might as well do it the same as I did that one. So let's have a look. All right. That's it there. So that's my top and I'm going to stamp it into this area here. See, now this is the thing, when you're working with parchment, see, I, I can see now, where do I want to put it? Do I want to put it there? Do I want to put it there? See, so don't worry about, you, you think you can't see the butterfly if you put it in a dark place. It's not true. The, the darker the area, the more impact you'll get in a minute. So I think I'm going to stick it there, because then I want to put the other one there, see? So I've got to give myself a bit of breathing space. So about there will do, yeah? So now, talc and powder at the ready, boof, that'll do. A little bit of that or anti-static, okay? And we'll just flick that off again. Right, we're on the front, the dull side. You enjoying this? Are you enjoying this? I love doing this stuff. I don't get nervous either, isn't that the strangest thing? How many of us are there? I can't see without my other glasses. I've got, oh, I tell you what, I'm falling apart. 242 people. Are you all stamping butterflies with me? Are you? God, I wish. Right, so what we've done the talc, yeah? Right now, black ink pad. We, we're using the paper one for our guide. That'll do. Right now, here we go. So we'll link this up. Thumb. Yeah, and we're going to stamp this onto the front first, and then we'll see where we go. Right, lift and plant. And one of the things about this is you really want to know where you're stamping before you stamp because you're working with a fast drying ink pad, okay? And 
And it's funny, when you stamp on a bit of copy paper, I've said this before, excuse this, is a bit, this looks a little bit <laughs> ridiculous. When it, you stamp on a cop, piece of copy paper and it works like a treat. And then you, you stamp on best and it goes wrong and you think, well, how come? I've heard it so many times. It was just perfect and then I stamped it on best and it went wrong. And it's like, yep, it's because you dither before you plant the stamp. There you go, lovely. Oh, I love it when it works. Right, so now I've got that one in place, yeah? That's nice. But what we need to do now is get rid of some of the colour. So. The way to do that, this needs to dry again, but it doesn't matter if we, let's just flick that over for a minute. It doesn't matter if it, it, will, it will blot. So turn that over, okay? Let's turn that over and let's have a look because have you got your white rubber, your white eraser pencil? It's the white one you want for this. You can use a pink one as well, but you won't get rid of as much of the the ink on the back with the pink one. The pink one's really nice if you're doing like um, like the moon and you don't want to completely eliminate, you want a shadow. You know, the pink one will slowly take out the colour, whereas this one pretty much is instant look. I'll show you. Let's go into a little corner somewhere, like over here where it's really dark. Look, see how it comes away, look at that. Okay, that's how easily it comes away. So when you turn it over, the colour's gone there. And that's exactly what we're going to do now. So if we take this one, let me explain something as well. This is an ink eraser. So let's talk, think this through. If you don't do it, whatever you do, if this is the front, right, and you go to rub this out, you will eliminate the you just get rid of all the black ink as well. It will come out too. So make sure that you're on the glossy side now when you go to rub out. The best thing to do is do this and do a little tester. And now I know, right, I mean, if you're really thinking that you're gonna go the wrong side, then put a little buffer back in the corner where you can't see it. <laughs> but we're staying on this side now, so we're not gonna, and it's fine. And what we'll do is, right, We'll, we'll take out the colour on the back. We're going to use this white eraser from Faber-Castell. Here we go. And if you've got a, a brush, these are great for this. You know, you're bound to have it. Don't matter if it's got a bit of ink on it. It won't make a bit of a difference. Right. Just take a, a brush. And now just rub out. Right, here we go. You got, have you got a pencil sharpener as well? Because in a minute you're going to need to sharpen it. So you flick it away. Let's turn it round to the front and have a look. See how it's, it's taking out some of the ink? Doesn't matter. It's no big shakes. See? In fact, it's not a bad idea if it does. Just takes out a little bit of the sharpness of the ink. But when you flick it to look, you definitely want to flick it back and make sure you've got a little buffer back in the back and make sure it's shiny before you start again. It's just a good idea just to always make sure it's shiny before you start again. Because, you know, how does she know these things? You go to, you go to do this and then suddenly your butterfly's disappearing and you think, oh, oh, wrong side, I'm on the front. And if you're using an ink eraser, guess what? You will erase the ink, including the black ink. Which is a good thing to know if you haven't got any of that handy <laughs> and you want to get rid of a bit. Aha, uh -huh. yeah. See, the thing about parchment, this design of parchment, particularly beautiful, even if I say so myself, right? The thing about parchment, let me just sharpen this little fella, um, is it's got so many fantastic properties. I mean, Apart from the translucency, it, you wait till we start stretching it and embossing it like parchers do. But I think it looks beautiful. I mean, I'm sure this butterfly would look beautiful in white, you know, like groovy plate white. But there, I don't think you can beat uh, this, this 
is just glorious, right? And when you look at the colours, look, look at the, look at that. <sighs> now, you know, I think the black is what makes it really, really stand out and dramatic. And then the thing is, you see, look at the little white dots, they're so easy to do afterwards, you know. And if I feel that, I can feel it's all raised. Yeah, and if you turn it over, you can see the colour on the back has been applied. See the colour and the white? Look, it's glorious. Right. So let's have a look. If we're going to come back in here, make sure it's shiny before we start again. And I've sharpened my... Now I can decide how white I want this to be. Okay. So we've done this. How are we doing for time? Oh, we've got plenty of time. Okay, so let's pretend. Let's get up in this one as well. See, the other thing about parchment, of course, is that it, especially the design, the coloured parchment, like designer parchment, it's got it's 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 just a little bit, like a little flash. We will get to that. We will get to that. We will go to the ball. Right, let's have a look. There's my instructions so I don't go wrong. Shiny side, flick it over. The other thing about parchment, say this bit here, the, the antennae, the aerials. <laughs> the antennae, okay? I can't get the rubber in there. I cannot. It's too. It, it doesn't matter how sharp it is. I'm going to. I'm going to come over the edge. But that's where. That's where the embossing tools come in. So, for example, and I don't know. Even if you're not a parcher, we've got a set. Where is it? I had it. I had it handy because I wanted to present you with it. Here it is. Right. I'll show you this. I know I digress, but this is worth having. If you, we've got a set. Paul will bring up the details, and it's got a, it's got one of our mats. Right, let me show you. So you've got um, hard on one side for colouring, and then on the other side, sorry, it's my thumb. On this side, it, it's soft like the black mat. And what I did was I just took a baby wipe and wiped away some of the grid, so because it was a little bit noisy. The grid is really useful to have for lots and lots of reasons for layup. But a little tiny flash when you're colouring, it's, it's a little bit busy, a bit noisy. And you've also got the tools for embossing. So, so we'll come back to that though. Okay, I don't want to lose it. I'll put it back in there. There we go. This place looks like a bombs, a bombs it it. The thing is, what happens is I, I put layers on layers and then, and then it, gets, it gets lost. But if I make a mental note, in a minute we'll play Punch and Judy and I'll say, Where's the blue mat? And you'll have to go, it's behind you. Right, come on. Keep going, Grace. Stop dithering. Shiny side. Look at all the excess ink here. Shiny side. But you can see how the white rubber, it's fabulous. And it doesn't take long and you can create beautiful artwork. How much you remove is up to you. But when it comes to these, these here, I've got to show you really, I can't just walk away from it there. If I take, let me just show you something, if I take that blue mat, this is, I'll just show you quickly, right, because we'll come back to this. The blue mat, right, soft side, and then working from behind, and I'm going to use, right, we've got different tools here, I'm going to use the tool that fits in here softest. Now because this is a soft mat and I don't want to press so hard that I go th through the parchment, right, take a poly bag, put it on the soft bit and then look, let's just start here like this and let's see if we can, and I'm working from the back which is the shiny side, okay, here we go, right, let's get this like that and then you're going to colour from the back and this poly bag, this bit of plastic, it, it just reacts as a sort of a, res a resistance. It won't let you press so hard. 
that you go through the parchment. And then you can even go with the stylus, which, so I'm using the number one and the number two tool. Right, slowly does it. You probably want to do this in layers, right, so it doesn't... Let's have a look and I'll turn that around. So there you go, you see. And when you look from the top, if I put that, you can see how that's gone white now. Or even if, well, see if I put it on the black, you see how it goes white, yeah? And, and work in layers. But what a difference that makes, right? In fact, while I'm here, I might as well just get this done. It helps a lot. Start with a larger ball tool and just gently apply pressure. And here we have one of the magical properties of parchment. It's, it's the stretchability. It's the white work. I mean, most of you will be familiar with the white work. And the thing is, if you work from behind, and this is why our designer parchment is all our coloured parchment, actually, but the design of parchment we're working with, right, all our coloured parchment is um, only saturated with colour on one side so that we can, we still get that beautiful whiteness. I remember years ago, I was with Elizabeth in France, our French friends from Brittany, and uh, now let me just think what I'm doing here. And she was really into parchment. She got the she got the bug, you know, through Groovy. And then she said she bought some coloured parchment. This was a how this was how this kind of evolved. Because we were sitting in the back of the car, we were driving somewhere, and the, the men were in the front. And she was saying she was she'd bought some coloured parchment. We didn't do parchment at the time. And she said, and she was very disappointed because when let me make sure I'm on the right side, shiny side. She said, when I, when I went to do the white work, um, it didn't come out white. And then I realised that the parchment, so I said, show me when we get home. So she showed me the parchment. And the parchment was saturated with colour on both sides. So it didn't matter which side she went from, she was going to hit colour. And that's why the white work wasn't working. And that's why when I came back to England, I said, well, when we do coloured parchment, we're only going to saturate it from one side. That, that way, the parchment will still have that white work property. There you go. Right, so now, go back to this one. This one here, this is important now. While we're working on this one, well, don't worry, we'll get back, we'll, we'll come back to this one. We may have to do another Wednesday night for this one, but in the meantime, let's have a look at this one. So now there's a dilemma. If I, if I want to turn this round, then I've got to stamp it on the back, which is quite straightforward. I can do that. Right, so I'll flip this over and now I can, I can use this one on the copy paper to show me my position. Well, that's a result. Yeah, per perfect. Right, now let's think about this. If I, if I stamp this now, then when I go to rub it out, what did we just discuss? If I rub it out with my ink removing pen, then I'm going to eliminate the butterfly immediately at the same time. So here's the trick. Take your masking tape, right? Oh my thumb, Barbara Gray. <laughs> I need some more of that marijuana cream. <laughs> right, you ready? Oh, there you go. Stick that down like that. And now put that in place so it doesn't move while we're working. Are we happy with that position? We sure are. Right, so do that. And what we're going to do, because this is the back side, this is the shiny side that we took the colour out of. Because otherwise it's not going to work, is it? We're going to stamp it on there like that. But before we do that, we're going to use the translucency. It's good, isn't it? You got it now. You get it, don't you? We're going to rub out before we stamp. Oh, Barbara. Look, I can't even get, I can't even hold the thing <laughs> It, 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 it went at lunchtime. It just said, you know what? I don't want to play anymore. That was my right thumb talking to me. <laughs> so this weekend, I'm going to put it up. 
<laughs> like you put your feet up. <laughs> right, come on. So what we do now is, look, I've changed. <laughs> right, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll take the colour out before we stamp. I reckon that's going to be doable. Uh huh. Well, it works for me. Where's that? Come on, we can do this. And we're going to take the colour out with the white eraser before we stamp it. And we're using the template in the background that we stamped on copy paper to show us what we want to rub out. Yeah? Take your time. It's not a race. How are we doing for time? What's the time? Quarter two. We're not in a rush, are we? Do you know what? We're going to have to come back, aren't we? Should we hang out again together and continue with this? Would you? I don't know. W would you be up for that? Because we're we're gonna we're gonna slow down with the shack shack. We decided this morning, didn't we, that we're gonna just meet on Mondays and Wednesdays now for the summer. Because everybody's out, everybody's out, and everybody's getting their hair done and going to the eye hospital and getting their appointments that we've been waiting for a year for and la di da di da di da. So. I think it would be cool if we, I think Wednesday evenings are always a good call, aren't they? You know? Let me have a look at my calendar. I'll look at my calendar and I'll decide which Wednesday would be best for me. And then I'll make a suggestion. And then perhaps we could continue part two with our butterflies. What do you think? And maybe if we don't, if we run out of time to do the white work, with the embossing tools, that'll give you a chance to get some embossing tools and maybe get some parchment and maybe if I give it another couple of weeks, you know, you might be watching now because you thought, no, I've got thousands of butterflies, I don't need more butterfly stamps. I know, I bet you have, but I bet they're not as nice as these. <laughs> and now you're thinking, oh, I wish I'd bought them now. Well, there's still a good price on them and you can, you can get your Hey, you can get a pad of Waimea Falls or Indian Summer, can't you? Pa parchment, parchment, parchment. You could play catch up and then maybe, like in maybe two Wednesdays, not maybe three Wednesdays time, in fact. It'd probably be three Wednesdays because the Wednesday, we got an ODS somewhere tucked in there, a TV ODS. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I can tell you now. It's not going to be next Wednesday, and it's not going to be the Wednesday after that. It's going to be the Wednesday after that. Paul, get your calendar out and have a look what day that is, because I reckon that's going to be the right one. But it, it, it would need to be confirmed, but I think that's right. And then, this isn't hard, is it, what we're doing here? Let's have a look. So you understand the logic of this, don't you? If you... If you if you um, stamp this, then what do you think? If I if I take this and go to the front, what's going to happen? It's, it's going to happen. This is I've just there we go. But what's cool is see the white work will work from here, so I can get the antennae and all that, the aerials. There you go. With this one, you've got to, with this one, I can go in, am I on the right side? Yeah, I can go in and carry on taking, see this one, the ink's on the other side. This one, once I've decided to stamp, I can't go back in and take more white out. I can't, I can't wi go whiter. There you go. So, now I've done that. Cool. Right, uh, drum roll. So now what we've got to do is line up the stamp. I know it's a little bit of a monkey, but it will work just about. Let's see if we can get this lined up now, hey? <laughs> the thing is, thing is, what you've got to remember is you haven't got to line it up, you know, like to the millimeter, but just get it in the general white area, the vicinity, yeah? So you leave it like it is there 
And then, right, we've got all of all that. We've got an ink pad, we've got that. I'm going to come in on this camera only because you can see better from that angle and I can get my head right over the top to be able to ink it up and position it because I'm going to come right in over the top to see this. Right, because I stand, don't I, at the shows? And I stand in the moment of clarity. Right, are we enjoying this? What do we think? Right, okay, here we go. Hope it works. <laughs> my theory, well, it worked the first time, so it should work again. Right, oh, I'm going to blame it on my thumb. Right, over we go, and then we've got to come in like that, and then like that, uh, that'll do. And in we go. And then we're going to press. And it may be a little shadow. We may get a little drop shadow. We're going to, that's, <laughs> we'll talk about drop shadows now because it's a really great trick. All right, let's see if we got it in the right place. If you've got one of those stamp positioners, that's useful, isn't it? I think. <laughs> right. I always find with these big stamps, it's best just to. Do you think that's worked? Get rid of that. Get rid of that. I wonder if I turn this over, because it sticks, see? Yeah, I reckon. Right, rub it a little bit just to make sure on the back. So you've got that kind of... See if it works, shall we? Did it work? Right, so now we're on the back, okay? So you know we're on the shiny side. So it's clear that this one's darker than that one. This is weird though. Look, when you turn it round, they're both exactly the same depth of blackness. <sighs> I know, I know. I have my moments and this was a moment of clarity, even if I say so myself. Don't you sometimes, you come up with things and you think, do you know, that's clever. I like that. And so now we'll put that butterfly where I can find it. I'm going to get all cocky and then I'm going to mess it up. But let's have a look because there are, there are other things to be, to be learnt here. Okay, we've got, we've stamped with the black on this side and we've stamped with the black on that side. This is evident. But now you know how we got the white behind that. Right, that's good to know. So the next thing we want to do, what do you think? I think we deserve a little drink now, don't you? No, 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 no. I'm not talking about the sherry. I'm talking about a little, a little refreshment. <laughs> what does that look like? It's ginger. <laughs> it's vile, doesn't it look vile? Just because I'm drinking it out of a carling glass, it doesn't mean it's carling. I don't drink alcohol. This is ginger. Do you like ginger? Ginger's good for you. Ginger's very good for you. Good for the parts, apparently. Yeah. At night, before I go to sleep, I drink a fresh ginger, you know the big ginger root? I boil it for 10 minutes and I let it soak, just like slices of it, in boiling water. And then I add a squeeze of lemon and honey and you sleep like a lamb. If you, if you, if you do struggle sleeping, try it. Ginger, lemon and honey. Wonderful. Right, come on, let's have a look. What can we do now? So we've got this done and we've got that done. So let's let that one dry for two minutes. You up for this? And what we'll do now is we'll take, we'll go back to this one, right? Let that one dry for a minute and then we'll come to this one. And what we'll do is we'll cover this one up now with the mask. And we need, uh, I'm going to use a pair of tweezers to catch this because many of you may not be familiar with our masks. So the masks are cut to fit the stamps. And just because we're working on parchment doesn't mean it doesn't work. It just means we're doing the same job on parchment. I'm just trying to highlight the properties of parchment because it is fantastic, right? And the masks are reusable, reusable. One thing I want to say, right, now the weather's warming up. Let me just get this in the right. I'm going to have to come in on the other camera so I can get my head over the top. 
Um, as it gets warm, don't put your masks, top tip, don't put your masks in the sunshine or in a warm, indirect sunlight because they shrink. Yeah? <laughs> and then, because it's hot, they shrink. And you can tell that they shrink because then suddenly you can see a little bit, a tiny little bit of white around. And then when they shrink, guess what? That's right, they don't fit. And how does she know that? Mm, precisely, right? So, so the trick is to put your masks it, away from the direct sunlight and also facing into the packet rather than facing out of the packet at the top. Yeah? Just little things like that. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it, they don't fit anymore. So in that regard, they're a bit redundant at that point. Yeah, so I've put my mask on now, like that. And this is, for example, let me just, just let me find that beautiful artwork from D, because this is the point at which, right, you see this piece here? Let's just take a look at this one. Now, this is actually exactly the same uh, stamp. Um, and what, what D has done here, she's taken a black brush with black archival ink. I'm not going to do it, right? But now she's covered that up and then she's swept, 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 okay? And, and, and black archival and you sweep off and you get this beautiful cloudy, I mean you could use just on one side, a little bit on that side, I'm, I shouldn't do it really, um, but what you'll find is if you if you've stamped into a light area, then then this is the, this is the way to create a tonal change between the butterfly and behind the butterfly. So instead of adding lightness to the centre, which you could do as well, what you do is you add d darkness to the outside, and that will make the middle ping anyway. Yeah, very much so, very much so. But what we're going to do is stamp the second. Let's stamp the next. Um, butterfly into place. So we're going to use that one which is, let me just check, that one's this one on on the first set which if I'm not mistaken, now that's that one, I mean you use any butterfly you fancy really. Let's have a look. Come on we're all looking for this, oh I've put them to one side. Right this butterfly here, that's this one here, yeah? So we did this with talc, we've already done that, haven't we? We've done the talc trick. Right, and so that we need that one there and then this one here. Right, so off we go again. Ink up and then decide where you're gonna put it before you go, before you start. So that's gonna go like that. I've, it's got a little, I haven't really positioned it that well, Barbara, but that'll do. Right, so this one is gonna sit about there like that. Okay, that'll do. Right. So get your position in place before you start because remember we're working on the dull side, which is the right side, so that we can do all that lovely white work and what have you, right? So let's get this one done. See this one would be great. What we could do is when we get together, which I'm saying the 12th of May is what what about 12th of May evening session? Let me check my diary. Oh, I'm not sure that's wet enough. Let me check my diary, but I reckon that the 12th of May would be good to go and we could have another run at the butterflies. What do you think of that idea? I think that'd be fun, hey? Let's just put that one there like that. Okay, that'll do. And then press, okay? So we're just gonna press with the hand that still works, Barbara. <laughs> I think it's a combination of pottery, this is why this thumb's gone, pottery, uh, stamping for 30 years, I don't think that's helping, and age. <laughs> there you go, and then we'll just put a little bit of pressure around this side here so that we know that we're getting right in where the mask is, look, can you see? Look, it looks lovely from that side as well, because that's the thing about parchment, honestly. Until you start stamping on parchment, you have no idea how beautiful it is. There you go, that's that one. Boom. 
in the back of the net. Right, and then we'll do the next one. So this is going to be the third one. So we'll decide where we've already got a rough one. Here, look. Rough. Masterpiece is what I'm saying. Here. We've got our template. So this is going to sit where you want it to be. I mean, you don't have to have them overlapping, you know. Look, I did, I did a, a rough one just like that. And they're not overlapping, it's looser. You see the difference? Then that looks lovely too. But if you, I want to show you what the masks do. I want to show you what the masks do. That's why we're doing this. Right, so this one's going to sit. I don't want to clutter it up, but I think about there like that. Okay, right. Okay, right, un, deux, trois. I ink that one up. So we've decided where we're going to put it and then, yeah, do you know, we've got to get together because we haven't even done any colouring yet and it's already, and it's already four o'clock. Do a little tiny bit of colouring though, I want to show you a couple of little tricks and then when we get together on the 12th of May, then we could add the white work and do all that. But I'll show you a couple of little tricks with colouring. Okay, what do you think of that idea? Let's see if this worked. Right, lift that up, turn it over, rub a little bit, just to make sure that we get a good image. Hmm? What do you think? Good enough for me. Right, and then when we take this one off, she's in front of that one. That looks great. Right, that'll do. So now we've got our multiple, we've got our layer, you see? That one's a little bit light, but that's all right, because I'm gonna jazz her up a bit. I'm gonna go in with a pen and maybe fatten up the black a bit on this end here. I didn't press hard enough. I'm gonna blame it on the thumb. <laughs> but I can go in, do you remember I said, go in with one of those pens. God, I can't even get the lid off. This is getting ridiculous. Right, so I can go in here and I can, I can add, look, see, if you choose to, if you want to, you've got to have a steady hand for this job, but it will just blacken up. There we go. See? And then you just go in and just draw through and build the outline. That's it. And if you want to draw breath, always draw breath where there's, where there's a bit of noise or a little bit of a join or something. See? So straight away, that's, that's coming out now. And the other thing is, of course, I haven't taken out the white yet, have I? And the good, the difference is, this is why I wanted to, to do both of these. Ouch. On this one, because they're all stamped on this side, this is a straightforward. You just turn that over and you just rub out the colour on the back. You just literally, you can rub out the whole thing on the back. And then if you look at this one here, you'll see it's been coloured in. Let's go to the detail camera. Um, this is the back. This is the front. Look, very black, very dramatic, bit of white work, bit of embossing. Let's call it embossing. And then we've also got colour, right, with the pens. So what I'm going to suggest is, I want to show you a little trick with the other one though before we stop. We'll take this one this beautiful piece of artwork with the three butterflies, when we get together on the 12th of May, we'll take this one through, right? So in other words, we will, we'll add the colour, we'll, I'll show you how to add colour, we'll do the shading, we'll do the, 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 um, erasing, you could do that before, beforehand, if, if you fancy it, you could, you could get up to the point where you've rubbed out 
all three of these. So in other words, when we get together for the next the next time, you've already done, let me make sure I'm on the right side, yeah, shiny side, right? You've already gone through and taken out all the colour ready to re-inject colour. Can you do that? What, how do you fancy that? Yeah? So that would be my suggestion, is that we reconvene in a couple of weeks' time. So those of you who want to catch up, you can catch up. You can watch this. This is going to be loaded onto YouTube this hour that we've just done. So you can catch up with us easily by the 12th of May 2021. Right. And then even then we'll record that evening session. So it's just a two parter, really. It's just a two parter. Yeah. And in the meantime, you can you can have a go yourselves if you fancy it. But that's the one that I'm going to carry through to the end. OK. And what I want to do now, just for two minutes, two minutes, five minutes. OK. I just want to show you a couple of little tricks, because with this one, this is this is lovely. Right. I wanted to show you a couple of little tricks with the colouring. If you're on the Let's look at the, let's get a clean piece of copy paper. Here we go. Let's take a clean piece of copy paper. Right. If you're on the front, like this is the front and this is the back, you can see shiny, dull. You could see what we're going to do on the 12th. All the colour has been introduced on the back, right? Very much so. So we'll work out a sequence and we'll do it. This is proper parching, right? This is this. Now we enter the realm of parchment art. On this one, let's have a look at this one. So we're on the back and this time, instead of using, instead of using perga liners, let's use felt tip pens. OK, let's use felt tip pens. These are great. Just give me a couple of minutes. You may you may not have them to hand and that's fine um, because we're we're going to call it a day in a minute. But I just want to show you a, a little a couple of little tricks. So I've got this mix mat like see I've got choices. Let's get on the right side. If I if I go straight in with a pen, I'm, I've picked this lovely. These are great. These pens. These are double ended perga. Again, you see you look at perga and you think parchment, but it's it works beautifully on on card as well, especially if you use um, a, a mat, a, a mix mat. All right. So what we what we do is these pens. Let's see if I can take a little. It's got one end which is a bullet end, and then it's got another end which is a really fine, like super fine. You take a. They're brilliant these pens. Especially if you take a dark color. Let me take a dark color so you can see it. Dark. I'm not going to use this on here, but you can see it's really thick. But what what's special about these is the thin one. See, and it doesn't run out. OK, so these are worth investing in. Let's take this and I'll just show you a couple of different because you tend to you do this and you think the first thing you do is take your color. Which one have I got? The lightest one. I tend to play it. Safe, and then you just go through. Right. What you've got to know is this color won't move the black, provided that the black is dry. See, I can go through now with the light color and I can literally it won't. This one is stamped on this side, isn't it? But I can still go through like provided that the cut provided the ink, the black ink is dry, it will not move. OK, provided even on the front now, I'm on the front, provided the ink is dry, I can color in if I want it to be more vibrant. I can come in from the front. It's not going to move. Just bear that in mind. I can run across the the line art, do you see, and it's not going to shift. Look, I can go in here. I'm just showing you how it doesn't move. It doesn't matter which side you work on, it won't move. If you want to get a little bit of contrast, like a little bit of white showing, you've got choices. You could either emboss it with a big ball tool Right to get the the white will always prevail. Remember, even after you've coloured it in, the white will come through. Right, but if, for example, I wanted to do some darker colour now, some shadow. Let's come in a bit closer so you can see it. 
Right, here we go. And this is what we will we'll focus on this kind of thing when we get together again on the, the 12th, yet to be confirmed, but I reckon. Let me show you this. If I come in here, that's good, you can see that properly. If I, if I come in here and I go straight into the there, it dries and it, it's very radical. And the darker the pen, the m more unforgiving it is. If you do a little hop, skip and jump, I can take this and I can use one of my, is this a clean one? Hang on a minute. Let me just get one of these. That'll do. There you go. Right, and I can lift up the colour off here with my blending pen, okay, and then I can come in and I can add the depth, look, and I've got, it's like really different because it's not as radical. You see, so you pick it up here and then you can deposit it down and these, these blending pens, they help you really add depth and shadow like really beautifully. Right, so you do it on this side, let me show you. See, if I go in directly with a pen, let me see, the only, if I went in at all with a, directly with a pen, it would be with the, th the thin thing, this thing, right, the thin end, this thing, what am I doing, right? So for example, I could add a little bit of shadow there, but then it's very stripy, then I would take my, my blending pen and I would blend it in. But I still need a bit more colour to tone that edge down. There you go. You see, if you're going in with a darker pen to get that beautiful graduation that you usually only can achieve um, by using Dorso oil, right? And that's what we're going to look at. Um, Dorso oil will smear your black. So you've got to be really aware. When we do this one, right? And we use pergoliners on the back, because we haven't got any black ink on the back, we can use uh, dorso oil, we can blend beautifully, you see, no problem. If you've got black ink on the back, like I've done here, then you've got to start thinking, well, what colour am I using? And the other thing is, right, with these pens, sometimes you'll see artwork on Groovy Worldwide, right, and you think, how come it's so vibrant? My parchment works never that vibrant. Why is that so beautiful, you know? And the colours just jump out at you and you think, how's that possible? Right, I'll tell you how that's possible. It's because at the moment, like I'm, I'm doing this on the front. And historically, if you listen to the average parcher, you will usually hear them say, only ever colour from behind, yeah? But these, they also, I've, I've watched Linda Williams, you know, there are no there are, there are no rules that can't be broken, right? She colours in from the front, for sure she does, especially if she wants it to be more vibrant. So you can mix it, see, doing a little bit from the back, doing a little bit from the front. And then the other thing is, so you can see how you can add, look how I can add depth just with a little mix mat, a blending pen, and the thin end of the, poly, uh, the, the, um, the perga colours. You know? So I just wanted to give you those little, look at that, and that is using that soft blue mat and, and a tool, uh, an embossing tool, and stretching the parchment. And even though it's coloured parchment, it still comes through snowy white, and therein lies the magic of Clarity Pergamano parchment nowadays. That's something that we added to the, to the range, and, and I'm really proud of it. Yeah. So I think, I think that'll do, right, as far as stamping on parchment goes. And the, the only other thing I wanted to just finish on is what we were looking at. I, I blogged this yesterday because it's something that we talked about in the shack, wasn't it? And we were talking about, because um, we've been in the Garden of England and we did these three little scenes. Many of you are in there with me. And, um, and I just want to, let me just pan out so you can see this. Hang on, wrong way. Right, and what we've, what we've done is we developed this, this um, triptych idea. 
So in other words, it's a triple mount, if you like, right? So we've got this triple mount. And then what I wanted to just show you is how beautiful these images are, because it goes back, this goes back to the butterflies. At the end of the day, whether you stamp these butterflies on parchment or on card or on paper or on newsprint, they look beautiful on a book, masked. Oh, see, that's something that we could do. I could, I could spend months working with these butterflies. But what we've got is this triple, this triple mount idea. And the, the thought that I had was, so these are, these are four by four apertures and it's six inches wide, right? And these little shapes that I'm doing here, what I've done with them, this is from, do you remember the stamp board? We've got the hearts, the triangles. These are the, um, the square ones. And all I'm using here are the, the small ones. To, these are like shims, if you like. I'm just padding it out a bit. I think this looks far more attractive and professional on the wall than sticky fixes. I'm not a fan of sticky fixes. And then this one is the one in the middle, which is slightly smaller than the aperture itself. But it's the, it's the perfect size from these stamp board shapes. It just fits as if we had a plan. Honestly, sometimes I do think people must think we, we know what we're doing. <laughs> right, so check it out. So you've got that and you've got that. Now, how do you stick this down? Well, that's our, oh, hang on a moment. Let me just grab it off the front here. Uh, look. This, our glue runner, is perfect for this. So you'd run it slowly like you know we do. You attach the front to the back. That's what we would use. It works like a treat, not wet glue. Why would you if you got that, right? And then you take your butterflies and you stamp them black archival, right? And then again, glue runner. And that one goes on there like that. And that one goes on there like that. I mean, you could use, there's so many butterflies in this set. And then whoo, whoo, that one in the middle. And what, what's lovely about this, when it's down, because you've raised it, but it's, it's like raised, but then indented again, because of all the different layers, you get beautiful drop shadows, do you see? And so you can see wherever the light is hitting, it just looks so professional. And to me, this is a gallery piece. Now, if I, if I wanted to add a little flash of colour, I could, you know, of course I could. I could add a flash of colour, maybe make them blue. And I tell you what, oh shackers, perfect pearls, perfect. Just a little flash. And oh yeah, hang on a minute, Ranger 10, back in the building, because we've run out of everything. We've got, have we got gold back in the building? I do hope so. So the perfect pearls are back in the building, the mica powders, because we really, we ran out of everything in the end. Anyway, so I just wanted to leave you on this super arty note. And, uh, and that's it, my friends, for today. And thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. We, do you know what? We're going to get together again with the butterflies because hundreds of you have bought them. So hundreds of you should, should join in really. I think it's about not just, um, it's not just about buying the stuff. It's about knowing what to do with it, you know, and it's also that craft along, you know, the feeling I love knowing, I love it, knowing that you're doing what I'm doing, you know? It's just brilliant. Anyway, Paul, thank you very much. And, um, and thank you for joining me. And I'm going to put my hand up and rest my thumb. And I'll leave you on this note. Isn't that just gorgeous? And you know what? Cherry Green, thank you for the beautiful artwork. And I'll, uh, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye now. Lots of love.